Hi, my name is Mark Hemmings, and in this video, you'll discover seven tips for creating unique abstract photos. So the first tip is to use direct sunlight to create unique shadow abstracts. Take a look at this shadow photo of a tree in winter. All of the leaves are gone, which transforms the tree from a metaphor of life and abundance to a more eerie feel. Many photographers will either only photograph when it is sunny and avoid cloudy days, and others will only shoot on cloudy, overcast days but avoid direct sun. Neither of these are good practices. For direct sunny days, get out with your iPhone either after sunrise or before sunset and look for shadows that fall upon the walls in your city. Remember, you want your photos to evoke a feeling or an emotion in the viewer. So if you feel something, either good or bad, there is a chance that your viewers will feel something as well. Now let's take a look at this next photo. This time, in place of an old tree casting a menacing looking shadow, we have a cheerful shadow created by a wrought iron fence. Why does this image evoke a more welcoming feeling than the previous photo? Both of them had the exact same kind of light, but the color yellow usually has a calming effect on the viewer, which allows the photo to give off a happier feeling. Again, this shot was taken just after sunrise or before sunset. Why is this timing important? It is because the sun will cast shadows on vertical walls at this time. When the sun is high in the sky, like at noontime, a vertical wall will not get very many interesting shadows. Take a look at this red barn exterior. This photo could be an example of a minimalist style photo, as there are so few visual items within the picture space. In fact, the entire photo is made up of geometric forms such as squares, rectangles, and triangles. This is a good thing, as simple, minimal geometric forms really add strength to a photo. Think less is more. Regarding direct light for abstracts, in this photo, only a small percentage of the scene is illuminated by direct light. Someone might initially complain that most of the photo is dark and therefore not a very good picture. However, a brief study of Asian art, most notably Japanese and Chinese art, will show you that there's a great value in having vast amounts of empty space within your photo or painting. A technical term for empty space in a photo is called negative space. Therefore, always feel free to add direct, harsh light with negative space. The two go together wonderfully. Now we're on to tip number two. If you don't have access to direct sunlight, you can still create beautiful abstracts using other simple methods. The second tip is to turn your photos upside down to make an ordinary photo extraordinary. Almost all photo editing apps allow for flipping a photo upside down. Look for these two options that do the same thing flip vertically, and rotate 90 degrees. If you only have the rotate 90 degrees option, make sure you press it twice to get a full 180 degree turn. Take a look at this photo of people's shadows walking along an old cobblestone street. The normal photo that came out of the camera was already a decent abstract, most notably because of the deep shadows. However, when this photo was flipped vertically, it became even more abstract. Remember, a good photo often leaves a question mark in the mind of the viewer. The longer the viewer lingers on your photo with a puzzled look on their face, the better. Take a look at this photo of a cloudy sky and tree line. While it may look like a texture filter has been applied to the water section of the photo, that texture is actually sand and small stones at the bottom of a lake and the clouds are reflecting off the lake's surface. Naturally, the trees are upside down in this photo because what we're seeing is the reflection of the trees from the other side of the pond. Okay, now let's flip the photo 180 degrees. Now the reflected trees actually look like actual trees, and the lake's surface now looks like a textured sky. It's amazing what kind of subtle abstracts you can perform simply by flipping a photo upside down. The next photo is a similar situation where we are making use of a glassy, reflective surface to create a strange abstract. 
Instead of liquid water, this pond was frozen, thus it had a cool-looking texture already built in. No filters needed. The dead trees and logs were already strange-looking and somewhat creepy, but even more so now that the photo has been flipped upside down. Can you see the reflections of the clouds on the surface of the ice? It was a cold, dreary day when that photo was taken, and the cool blue color cast really adds to the feeling of the photo. If flipping the photo doesn't quite work, there's another simple technique you can use. Isolate parts of a larger photo to create an abstract image. Take a look at this photo of a cruise ship. It is a decent shot, but not a prize winner, and certainly not as abstract as it could be. Now let's flip to the final image, which only has a few subtle changes, but looks far more abstract now. To find the process of these small changes that make a big difference, let's look at this demo video. We're now in the iPhone's native photo app. So what we're going to do is click once on the photo, and then we can actually scroll around. And we do this just to make sure everything is sharp and the way we like it. We click again, and now we have the option at the top right-hand side to click the Edit button. And now we are in our edit mode, and this is exactly what we want. The first thing that we're going to do is go to the Crop Tool, which is the little square icon on the right side. And the Crop Tool allows us to straighten the image. To rotate the photo within the Crop Tool, simply place your finger on the wheel that protrudes from the right side of the photo and scroll either clockwise or counterclockwise. This photo of the cruise ship was slightly off, so we're going to straighten it nicely. And when we have the straightening that we like based on the grids, we can go on to the next operation. And this will be cropping the unnecessary elements from the bottom. We don't need to see those, especially if we're creating an abstract photo. Now we're going to pull from the left in a tiny bit with the crop just to get rid of the lifeboat because we want to make this a little bit more abstract. And that looks like a pretty good composition. Remember, in abstract photography, we're wanting to remove the sense of this is a known object and sort of isolate elements to make it an almost unknown object until the viewer figures out what it is. The next thing we're going to do is click on that little icon that looks like a clock. And that will give us light color and black and white. So we're going to click on the black and white option. Now in this particular photo, because there wasn't very much color to begin with, there's not much shift when we scroll through these black and white options. But in your photo, there probably will be, especially if there was a lot of color to begin with. We're going to choose a black and white option here that has the most amount of contrast. So we click Done, and the image is saving. And here's our photo. As you saw in the previous demo, in the end, we converted the photo to black and white which leads to the next tip. Convert simple geometric images to black and white for creating unique abstracts. First of all, why do people bother with black and white photos given that all digital photos are colored to begin with? There's not that much real black and white film around anymore, so wouldn't it seem like cheating to change your photos from color to black and white through a computer program or an app? While there are no doubt purists who would hold such a restrictive view, your job is to create works of art that you are proud of, not the critics. If a black and white conversion feels good to you visually, then go for it. There are a number of reasons why you would want to change a photo to black and white. Take a look at this next slide, where we have the original architectural photo next to the final edited image. If a photo only has one color tone to it, such as this picture, it may become a stronger photo if converted to black and white. Also, if a photo has architectural details, which are straight or curved geometric shapes and lines, it too may be a good candidate for a black and white conversion. As this photo of a church exterior in Mexico fits both of these scenarios, a black and white conversion plus cropping results in a much stronger and more interesting photograph. My next tip, which is also related to photo editing, is using the mirror effect to create remarkable abstracts. The mirror effect is a clever tool that many apps have built in, but for our purposes, we are using an app called Photo Mirror Collage HD. The app actually has a very easy job. All it has to do is cut your photo in half or in quarters 
and rearrange the segments to mirror each other. In this abstract photo of four staircases, the original photo was of course only one staircase. But when we tell the app to choose the quarter option, this is what we come up with. Again, as was mentioned in the previous tip, because the staircase was only one color to begin with, converting it to black and white made a lot of sense. While you may be thinking that you don't need to learn how to create such odd abstract iPhone photos, keep in mind that these mirror apps also replicate, for example, the reflection of a calm lake when you're out in the woods, and there is no lake anywhere near you. Essentially, when you choose a horizontal, half-sized mirror, the lower portion looks like the kind of reflection you would get on a pond or lake on a beautifully calm day. This technique may be very good for those who love nature photography. Let's take a look at this next image. Similar to the one prior, this wooden staircase in a modern style home was duplicated three other times into quadrants, and the result is this strange kaleidoscope looking abstract. Almost any photo works well with the mirror effect, but especially architectural photos. The first thing that you will need to do is download one of the hundreds of photo mirror effect apps. Some are free but include ads, some are free but with in-app purchases, and others are paid versions. While the Photo Mirror app is no better than any other, in this demo we will practice with that particular app. The option at the top of the list is called Mirror, and that is the one that you can click on. You will now see all of your photos and albums, and search for your preferred mirror test photo. We will click on the photo of a normal looking stairwell, and by default it comes up in a vertically oriented mirror perspective. As you can see, as we scroll through the mirror options, there are many great perspectives to choose from. Some look really good, others don't. But there seems to be about six perspectives that often work very well. So let's scroll back to the first mirror option. The cool thing about the mirror perspective effect is that not only does the mirrored image look interesting, but you can also do a two-finger pinch in and pinch out to reveal many more mirror options. Keep pinching side to side until you get a composition that you feel looks great. Next, let's try the second option, which is also a vertical style mirror, but is different in that the original image is flipped horizontally. Again, play around with the horizontal pinching to get the best abstract look. Now try the third option, which is called a horizontal split mirror effect. Again, pinching the photo will reveal many different compositional options. The fourth mirror effect is also a horizontal split, however the original image is reversed. Now we are going to scroll all the way to the end of the effect options, to a quad mirror view. This is where things get interesting. Keep pinching the image to get different results. Directly beside the quad mirror view is another quad mirror, but again, the original image has been reversed. Okay, let's say that we like this view the best for our iPhone abstract photo. At the top right of the screen, there is a light blue colored up arrow which you can click on. At this point, you can save your photo or post to social media. It is always best to save the photo first, then post to social media afterward, if you want to. If you don't want to do heavy edits, you can keep your photo simple and abstract by using negative space. We touched upon the theory behind negative space in tip number one, where the direct sunlight was hitting a red barn exterior, but most of the picture was in shadow. Let's look at this photo of a lone tree at the base of a steep and imposing rock cliff. Do you see anything odd about this composition? Normally, we would have taken this photo so that the beautiful tree fills the frame. But following in the steps of the great Asian artists, we will allow a lot of unusual empty space to fill the frame and only allow the primary subject to occupy a small percentage of the overall picture space. Why is this valuable? Interestingly, the empty space results in us appreciating the small primary subject even more. Let's look at the next photo, which was taken in a clothing store. 
it is quite possible that a photo of just the clothes hanger and rack may not have been very interesting. But by adding a healthy dose of negative space, suddenly the clothes racks become interesting and artistic. One important tip. The area of negative space should not have too many distracting visual elements to it. Let it either be a nice smooth surface, or if the surface is textured, try to capture it as a single color tone. And finally, if you run out of ideas on how to take abstracts, I guarantee that you have a lot of objects around the house that could help you create interesting abstract photos. So the last tip is to use semi-transparent household objects to create an interesting light abstract. In this next demonstration, we're going to use something as simple as a shower curtain to do some abstract photography with our iPhone. The sun is shining straight into the bathroom, and this opaque curtain, which can be purchased very cheaply at almost any store, creates a very interesting abstract appearance. So let's take a picture. And here is the picture that we took. So now you've gone through the tutorials and are ready to get out and start shooting. Your iPhone is the perfect companion for creating unique abstract photography because it is almost always with you. Fortunately, with the wealth of amazing iPhone apps available at the App Store, there is now no need to download your photos to a computer, then use an expensive and complicated photo editor, and then send your photos back to your iPhone. Everything is self-contained now within your iPhone, and your workflow can be straightforward and fun. Have a great time exploring abstract iPhone photography.